Next speaker is going to be Matan Hart with Symptom. Thank you, Adam, and the entire attack team for having this, uh, giving you the opportunity to present. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. Uh, huge fan here. Um, I'm going to talk about today is um, how you can transform adversary emulation into a data analysis question using the MITRE attack framework and specifically the mitigation in the attack framework. Um, about myself, um, usually I look like in the picture on the left side, but uh, during COVID, I might look like this. Uh, I'm a co-founder and CEO at Symptom, a security startup specializing in security testing. I've been a security researcher in the Israeli Defense Force and as well as in the private sector. Um, some of my research I've been presented in uh, several security cons such as uh, Black Hat. And actually the inspiration for the content that I'm talking today is, uh, is based on my uh, 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 existing work, building solutions and uh, conducting security assessments for large organizations. And click, great. So let's start with adversary emulation. Um, other side, I have an issue with the clicking. Great, uh, there is a lag a bit, sorry about that. So adversary emulation, uh, for those of you who um, need a recap, is uh, the way that uh, has been used uh, popularly, one of the most uh, useful uh, use cases for the attack framework, which is basically um, um, allow the organization to test their defenses uh, against uh, specific threats. The attack framework can uh, be very beneficial to uh, measure, test, and then also make improvements to defenses uh, based on the different adversary tactics, techniques, and uh, procedures. Um, but the problem with adversary emulation is that it, uh, it doesn't scale, nor it wasn't intended to, basically. The main focus of adversary emulation is to test specific controls uh, in a controlled manner um, that is very targeted to a specific network and, and emulating a specific, specific threat. Uh, the issue with it is that um, some organization uh, are looking are still early on uh, during their, uh, their work with the attack framework and they basically want to get an initial uh, state of where they are standing with their defenses uh, against the, the matrix. Um, and what I've seen that uh, basically some organization are trying to emulate all attacks, uh, uh, all, in, all in the network. Uh, I've seen one time that there was an organization with uh, 50,000 uh, endpoints uh, where they needed to emulate uh, a, a lateral movement uh, technique uh, used by an a a APT, and they had uh, and they figured out, out only where after they used some kind of automation that they literally emulated two and a half billion uh, emulation because they tested it from each computer to uh, all of the other computers in the network. So it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it was a big number and it's actually uh, uh, made a huge disruption to their network. So what I'm suggesting is to uh, a different approach uh, using the MITRE attack matrix uh, framework that basically check the, instead of checking detection capabilities that are the most commonly used with adversary emulation is to basically look at the uh, um, aspect of the, uh, of the mitigation of the uh, attack framework. Uh, and, and testing each uh, um, uh, technique and the associated mitigations if you really have the, uh, the right capabilities to prevent uh, this technique before uh, going on to detection. So the mythology is uh, have four steps. First of all, uh, choose an attack technique. Uh, you, you should preferably choose the technique that you feel more, uh, you want to have the first initial that you feel comfortable that you want to test first. If you're already uh, mapped, have uh, mapped uh, techniques to detection capabilities, so you should pref uh, preferably start with something that you feel that you don't have enough uh, data sources or detective uh, capabilities uh, um, uh, in place. Uh, then for each, uh, for the technique that you choose, you, you, you should uh, test for each mitigation how much it's effective because not all of the mitigation that are in the, uh, in the attack framework are having the same, uh, same uh, they're reducing the same uh, attack vector. Some of them are just reducing some of the attack surface or the exploitability of that technique. And some of them are truly 
mitigated the uh, the technique entirely. Uh, after you 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 you, you grasp those uh, techniques that you want to focus on, uh, you should uh, uh, map the uh, the data sources uh, that you can really collect the information needed in order to validate the applicability of that mitigation. Uh, preferably, you should uh, do for do it for all the mitigation for that technique in order to be, make sure that you're not missing uh, any information. But in generally, uh, as 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 mentioned also by uh, previous speakers before me, uh, it's not science the yeah, that attack framework, and you don't have to be 100% all the time. Uh, and it's okay that even if you don't, if you feel that it's not 100% accurate or you don't have access to all the information, you can still be able to have the initial state to conclude if a specific technique you are able to uh, uh, to to prevent in your uh, what's what is your current situation during with that uh, technique and how much is exploitable um, in your network, not on specific endpoint, rather on the entire uh, attack surface uh, inside a network. Let's take uh, a test case, uh, the pass the hash uh, scenario. Uh, basically, uh, pass the hash is a literal movement and uh, defense evasion uh, technique that allows uh, uh, an adversary to, to move, move laterally between endpoints based on uh, credentials that they can reuse because they, uh, those two users have the same um, uh, credentials. It's very common between endpoints that are used by the same image and the default uh, uh, built-in users, are, their passwords are not uh, changed after they've been deployed. Uh, and something that is still very common uh, uh, to see in organization and something very hard to really know what has been changed or not. Uh, when we're looking at the mitigations uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the attack framework about this specific technique, there are basically four uh, different mitigation that offer different, uh, um, they, they, they have different ways to mitigate the threat, the, uh, this technique. However, not all of them are, are actually doing the same. Uh, and they also uh, their exposure that they are reducing or elim eliminating is not the same. So when you go, when you drill down with the small letters, first of all, you can understand uh, what is really need to be checked, what data should be collected. Um, and then you can move on to do a bit of research. It's not something that is very easy, but uh, we took here a case that is more, more harder as some that the mitigations are more straightforward. But when you check each mitigation uh, uh, specifically, uh, you can see that their effectiveness is not all, uh, always the same. So of course, if you have the capability to check if there is any type of credential overlap, uh, the first mitigation, which is privileged account management, uh, if you use LAPS or you have access to endpoints and check uh, uh, the registry or whether you have uh, a PAM solution that you can uh, uh, use to assess, uh, this is the, the, the best mitigation that you could, uh, uh, you could check and you could also enforce. But uh, of course, uh, life are not, uh, uh, are not perfect. And if you're looking for other mitigations, that could uh, reduce, uh, potentially reduce the attack surface. Uh, you should consider checking uh, for uh, uh, your patch management, how, if you install the, uh, the right patches that uh, the matter mitigation suggests, uh, as well as uh, which, which will mitigate the, the exposure uh, only to um, administrative uh, local accounts. Uh, you could uh, go with the user account control uh, mitigation, which is aimed more for, the, for domain users but uh, it, could, it could be easily checked by uh, checking the Active Directory in the GPO uh, to, to see if there is uh, or users that are, have um, um, multiple systems that have administrative access, uh, that the same user have this, uh, administrative access to both of them, and maybe you should uh, consider uh, focusing on that mitigation as well. Uh, other, other effective mitigation that has been used in the, uh, in the um, in the frame that is uh, commonly uh, seen in an organization that is easy to implement is the user account management. Is basically uh, enforce some uh, UEC restrictions uh, during uh, using the GPO. Uh, if you don't trust your GPO, you could also, if you have the capability, to uh, query each endpoint registry and look for the right keys, which are uh, which are also mentioned in the MITRE mitigation in the, in the attack mitigation. Uh, and basically, if you don't have, uh, if your built-in administrator account is disabled. This is a, a very effective mitigation to uh, to eliminate uh, local uh, the local variation of uh, local account variation of the pass the hash um, attack technique. 
And uh, of course, you know, you can do a, a, a talk about the attack framework and not show a fancy heat map. Uh, so here is my heat map. Uh, what we focus here, which is the, uh, the important um, difference is that we are not uh, mapping uh, um, the detective controls. We are checking only if the existing mitigations are uh, applied. So if you already built a heat map uh, that, that um, shows your uh, detection capabilities, this heat map could look very different. Uh, and I suggest to use it as a complementary uh, uh, to the techniques that uh, you feel that you don't have enough detection controls. If you don't have uh, already and you want to focus and you start uh, in, uh, and you know we start from square zero, I think it's better, I feel it's better to start actually with this heat map. And then when you, if you feel comfortable with uh, uh, preventing uh, some of the attack techniques, you should focus your detective controls uh, for other techniques in, uh, in the matter framework. So those, uh, you can build even in interesting attack, um, a heat map that contains how, much, how many of the techniques you are able to prevent using preventing controls, uh, using the mitigations in the attack framework, and how many of those uh, uh, you only able to, to, de to detect. So uh, it's interesting uh, use case to, to know, to make a defense gap analysis uh, first with uh, mitigation and then uh, also with detection. So uh, it's important to, to mention that there is, um, there is no, um, you need to pick the right tool for the right job. Uh, adversary emulation is great. I've been doing it also for years. Uh, it's, it, it helps organization uh, really to, to know really where they stand. Uh, and it also check how your also people and processes are, are performing. Uh, the issues that, uh, this, that makes adversary simulation to not, not to scale is the potential business disruption that it might create. Uh, and also the, the experience team that, uh, that should do it in a, in a safe manner. That analytics, uh, on the other hand, uh, could be a, very, a good uh, complementary uh, to first get uh, the right coverage uh, in the attack framework as well as the network coverage uh, in a safe and, uh, manner that's, that scales be that could scale better. Uh, I uh, suggest to start with, uh, um, with that analytics if you don't perform adversary emulation yet. Uh, and, and then based on the results that you can map from the attack matrix uh, in order to check your detective controls or to see how you can uh, uh, really check that the mitigation that you've implemented are performing as intended. Uh, adverse simulation could be a good use case uh, uh, to check um, check this. The issues with data analytics is that first of all, it doesn't check detective controls, which which is of course one of the main use cases uh, uh, in that in in that people use the attack matrix and the, the attack framework, uh, and it doesn't really check any type of processes. To conclude the uh, presentation, uh, first of all, adversary emulation are, are great, uh, they're important, and it's something I, should, I, I suggest uh, everybody to practice, even if you're not in the red team. Also, blue teams can use the atomic red team, which uh, Brian uh, talked about, uh, but as well, it's something that you should use uh, cautiously. It's something that, you, that you, you don't really want to run it all in order for your network. Rather, you want to do it specifically to check specific uh, controls in, in, in a control environment. That analytics, in, on, the other hand, on the other hand, could be a better uh, approach to get the initial state of where your, uh, what is your defense coverage uh, and to know where you stand. And then you could operate and, and, uh, and implement uh, new capabilities, uh, whether are, um, uh, preventive or detective. And uh, I found the mitigation in attack very um, uh, beneficial to to understand uh, what's the defense coverage because first of all most of the uh, of the techniques in the MITRE framework and basically most of the uh, uh, controls that you, most organization have in the organization are first of all preventive and of course are should be preferred uh, so it's sometimes so I found the mitigation in attack something that is not uh, is that sh should be uh, used more often during uh, use, any type of usage for the uh, attack framework. Great talk, Matan, that was, that was fantastic. I really love, someone dropped a comment in Slack that 
you're effectively emulating the adversary emulators. But like you said, getting ahead of them and saying, you know, before we even, even, even if we're, we don't have that resources to do an emulation or before we do it, let's go ahead and figure out like, what are we doing in terms of the mitigation aspect? Where I think a lot of people really appreciate it, and that resonates with them. Uh, biggest question though, I think a couple people are already asked this in Slack is, what advice do you have for the community in terms of the process that you shared of, you know, looking at attack, seeing the mitigations for a technique and actually translating that to, you know, what can we do in our environment? How does that line up with our technology? Uh, what, 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 any words you can share with the community and any wisdom um, you can kind of bless yeah. with there? Great. So, so first of all, I think as also uh, discussed in the previous talks, and I guess it's something that uh, uh, we, we learn with attack uh, on a daily basis, that it's the, the human aspect, you know, you can't really automate everything and there is a magic. Of course, you should, uh, uh, it requires research, it requires work. I took an example, they passed the hash because it's an interesting case uh, and it's a bit complicated. Of course, some of them are e much easier to start with, but uh, yes, the process is to research, is to learn and, and to be familiar, uh, familiar with the different tactics and techniques and, and to be able to really understand and research what are the current capabilities that people have in this organization that they can really check. Of course, good, uh, good, uh, um, good cyber posture uh, and hygiene helps. And if you have the right tools and the right controls or use uh, vendors that help you automate some of the stuff, it could be easier. But uh, for, for most uh, uh, techniques, uh, I found it that it's pretty trivial. I do think that it's part of our work as a community to also invest in the mitigations in the attack even more. Uh, I know that those are also now the, uh, also the uh, shield. And of course we are, we're going toward how we can all as a community uh, be able to share more and, and make that things uh, and that process easy. Yep, love that answer. Like you said, um, cybersecurity is hard, but I'm I'm loving the contribute uh, plug. So like I said, by all means, keep contributing back to us. We love it. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for a great talking.